Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a Standard Arms camp gun. Now, Standard Arms is best known, by those who know of them at all, for making perhaps the worst American self-loading rifle in history. This was the Standard Arms Model G, patented in 1906 by one Morris Smith. The Standard Arms Company put it into production in 1909. They went out of business in 1912. Their creditors brought them back into business in 1913, and then they went out of business again in 1914, having manufactured a, an allegedly self-loading rifle that could also operate in pump-action mode if it didn't break, which it did all the time. So uh, I have a couple videos on standard arms guns, one on the Model G semi-auto, and one on the Model M pump-action only that was basically introduced in a desperate attempt to create some sort of functional gun out of the parts that they'd already made. But there was one standard arms gun that I have not actually seen until today, and that is the camp gun. Now, about 7,000 standard arms guns, rifles, were made in total, and of those, allegedly some 25 to 30 of them are camp models. Now, what makes this different is that it is a smooth bore, this is pump action only, and it's 50 caliber. It is made for a proprietary unique cartridge, which I haven't ever been able to see an example of, but should be very similar to, say, 5095. Um, it was designed, uh, in fact it's funny, it was advertised by Standard Arms as a combination rifle and shotgun, which is a little tricky. It is actually a smoothbore barrel, so we can't technically actually identify it as a rifle of any sort, because, well, it's not rifled. Uh, however, it was capable of firing either single ball ammunition or shot loads, and the thing that that reminds me of the most are the Indian uh, Ishapur 410 conversions of uh, SMLE rifles, which were converted for essentially riot use and prison guard use, where they took a 303 cartridge, essentially left it straight wall, so it was very similar to a 410 shell in size, and loaded it with a single round lead ball. That's the sort of single ball cartridge that the Standard Arms camp gun was intended to use, either that or shot. Think of this in practice like shot and slugs in a shotgun. So uh, let me show you a little bit of detail of what we have here of how the camp gun actually works and how it's different from the Standard Arms rifles. None of the Standard Arms guns have all that much on them in the way of markings. Uh, just a flat sided and really quite nicely finished receiver. Now, as I said, this is pump action only, so the tube here, when this was designed originally as a self-loading rifle, this was a gas piston um, with the operating handle mounted around it. Once they abandoned the gas operating system, uh, went to pump only, this tube really doesn't do anything except act as a base for the pump handle. We have a release lever right there, so that's what allows you to actually cycle it all the way in the forward position, it locks in place. Um, we'll just go out here to the end for a moment. We have a simple bead front sight, as befits a shotgun, and no rear sight. You just kind of have a bit of a, a sort of U-shaped depression there in the front of the receiver, uh, and you put the, the bead on that. The magazine does open from the bottom, but this one's stuck, and I can't get it open, and I don't want to accidentally mar the finish, so I'm going to leave that closed, because this is a really nice condition gun. Uh, this was designed to hold two in the magazine and one in the chamber, at least with this shot cartridge. And one of the interesting things about Standard Arms is they put some real time and effort into some very fancy furniture accoutrements on the guns. Uh, originally, they had a cast, I think it's bronze, butt plate, which we see here, as well as a cast bronze operating handle. And by the time they got to the camp guns, it appears they'd given up on the, the bronze handle, or they just deliberately gave it a wood handle to reduce the cost a bit. But we have that really nice, fancy bronze butt plate on this. For markings, we have a serial number here on the lower tang, 2550. Uh, about 5,000 of these were manufactured before the company went out of business the first time, so that places this probably somewhere around 1910, maybe 1911 production. We then have most of the markings out on the barrel, so manufactured by Standard Arms Manufacturing Company, Wilmington, Delaware, and some patent dates there. And then just in front of that, it is the Camp model, and it is 50 caliber. 
and as you can see there, thoroughly smooth bore. The camp uses a tilting bolt locking system, so as I start to pull the charging handle, the pump handle back, you can see, I will push it forward, you can see the back of the bolt here tilting up and down. There we go, it tilts down to unlock, and then cycles open. There is our magazine follower chamber. Um, you can disassemble these. We have an upper and a lower assembly here. If you're interested in seeing disassembly, I would suggest uh, take a look at my previous video on the standard arms rifles. Takedown is exactly the same on them, and I've already done it there, so I'm not going to risk perhaps scratching a nice condition gun like this one. These are extremely rare guns. Uh, their rarity is perhaps only matched by the rarity of people who are particularly interested in them. This is absolute, This is like the definition of the forgotten weapons company. Uh, Standard Arms showed up, made a product that was a dismal commercial failure, but still ambitious and interesting, uh, and then faded away right before World War I, leaving their competitors, primarily Winchester uh, and Remington, having produced self-loading uh, hunting rifles in the US uh, before World War I very successfully. Standard Arms is the third guy who didn't work so well. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the chance to take a look at the extremely rare version. Uh, this one is in gorgeous condition, and uh, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.